Tell us when. Good afternoon, you Mavericks. We are back again. We are definitely upping the amount of live shows that we have going on given COVID, given all the restricted movement that a lot of us are now under. And so today we are going to have a great topic. We're talking with Michelle Olson and how we stay connected. But before we dive into that, I want to give a big thank you to Serenity Engage. They're powering our show today. And given what's going on with COVID, they are promising and pledging to help onboard 50 Colorado-based businesses to their HIPAA-compliant messaging and photo app. And guess what? The coolest part? They're giving it away for three, free for three months. That's no contracts, no hidden fees. So we're going to put all that info in the comments section. I invite you to take a look at it because right now this is so applicable to what we're talking about with Michelle of how do we stay connected in this disconnected, unsettling COVID pandemic. And with that, we're going to dive right in. And I'm Francis, your Chief Curiosity Maverick. And I'm, and I'm here with the other famous. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I love, I never know how he's going to introduce me. That's right. and, and I'm Catherine, your Chief Inspiration Maverick. And we are here with Michelle Olson. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you. So Michelle is a social gerontologist gerontologist, I always pronounce that incorrectly, and a creative arts therapist. And we're going to talk about digging deeper during this pandemic and creating new opportunities for our future. So uh, I spoke with Michelle a little while ago, maybe last week, and we were talking about having her on the show. And one of the first things that Michelle and I talked about was Really, we have an opportunity here to make change. If we look at this as a positive opportunity, let's take advantage of this and create the change that we need to create. Let's not go back to status quo. Um, so Michelle, one of the things we talked about is creativity. How do, oh, you know what? Let me back up. Tell our audience a little bit about who you are. Give them your background. Oh, sure. So yes, so I'm a social gerontologist, so I, um, love the study of aging. I look at the aging as not something that happens to older people. It happens across our whole life. So I look at kind of the psychosocial aspects of aging. And for the last 22 years, I've also been a creative arts therapist. And I work specifically with older adults. And I have a consulting business, which is called GeroPros.com. And we Kind of focus on different aspects of aging so if people whether you're an individual or an elder care organization or um you know a corporation if you need some some help through that gerontological lens we're here to help you um but it truly creativity is like my heart and soul and how to be creative in my life and how to encourage creativity uh in the older adults that i work with and their care partners yeah, and you were sharing with me um, the time that you realized you absolutely fell in love with our older population. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, my well, my first experience with older people, it, it wasn't, I mean, yes, I had grandparents um, and, you know, for a short time in the home, but it was when I started working at a veterans hospital. I was working specifically with the very old veterans. I was working mostly with World War II veterans, and that was it. I was like, this is what I need to do. I had worked with children and I had worked with, um, you know, middle-aged adults and family age, you know, um, people, but it just, it didn't resonate. But when I started working with the older veterans, I knew that that was it. Oh, that was the moment, the spark. That was the moment. The spark that ignited it all. It and did. here we are. So let's talk a little bit about how we can instill creativity into this virtually connected world that we're in currently. Yeah. So, I mean, as scary as this pandemic is, and we're all, what's so surreal to me is that we're all in this together. You know, I'm in my pajamas and John Legend is playing the piano in his pajamas. It's <laughs> it's so strange and so surreal, but it it's also, and like you said, it's almost like a blessing in a way. Um, and we can see this. We could see how this is happening um, all over social media. Um, the, the creativity that's that's coming out of the fact we're being forced to be separated and isolated. So things like um, technology, I recently saw AI um, opportunities coming out in senior living where older people are, are entertained through robots and they're also able to connect with their loved ones. 
um, the apps such as Serenity and other uh, apps that are that are out. And Michelle, did we lose you? Nope, I'm here. No, we're here. We're here. Do we? I'm here. <laughs> I can hear you. Let me chat with Francis. Uh, oh, we lost Francis. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, he's. So he'll be back. There we are. Hello. Hello. We lost you. We were good. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys both disappeared on my screen. That was w interesting. That so is. We're back. See? Yeah. This is live. <laughs> I'm sure it's too many people at home using the internet, probably. <laughs> probably. But that's, that's like one of the kind of the amazing things is how now we're all using technology where before maybe, you know, most people were now it's like, it seems like everybody, no matter what you do, um, we're using technology. But anyway, so I was talking about the apps and, and AI. There's also speaking of creativity, there's so there's um, an outpour of free resources of virtual tours, you know, whether it's a national parks or museums or diving, you know, th these are things that are now accessible because of COVID um, Michelle, the do, you, other thing, mm -hmm. do you think we're going to see an increase in the amount of virtual reality for older adults, getting them comfortable with the headsets or even something along those lines to take those tours? I think so, because right now, I mean, people are even more isolated than they were already, which is something we'll talk about. But I do believe that it's becoming um, kind of a necessity because now people realize I can't even connect with my loved ones. So now they know we need to have something in place going forward that will be able to connect with our loved ones. Um, and, you know, the, our older uh, loved ones in care homes, but also just us, you know, communicating right now because we can't be face to face. You know, this is how we run our businesses right now. This is how we talk to our loved ones. But um, the virtual reality, I definitely see that that is going to be um, more accepted and more in demand. You know, I believe that. Yeah, I think so too. And I and there are so many different ways to connect, and to be able to to allow them through something like virtual reality to engage, really mm -hmm. engage with a space that they're not physically in, mm -hmm. uh, but they feel like they are. And that that's one of the really wonderful things I think about it. And I want to just go back. You mentioned uh, John Legend in his pajamas and, you know, we're all working from home. And I think that what we're learning and what we're seeing is we're all human beings. So mm -hmm. we're used to seeing the people on the Today Show or CBS Morning Show in their, you know, well makeup and coitured and perfect clothing. And, and now we're seeing them work from home. And one of them has a video, I don't know who it is, um, has a little video of him with his kids and his, his daughter has a virtual tea party with her friends via Zoom. And it, it's just wonderful. And right. I love the humanity that we're seeing through all of this. Absolutely. It kind of crosses over that facade that, you know, we normally have. Like you see these celebrities with their little kids running circles around them because, like you said, we're, we're humans. We're all just you know, doing the best that we can. And this is this is how we connect. And in some ways, it's so much more human, like you said, even though it's through technology, it feels a lot more real. Yes. It's kind of a weird paradox, but. Um, well, it kind yeah. of gets us back to uh, basics in a way that we're mm -hmm. all sort of on, I don't want to say even ground because we're not. There's still a lot of disparities in our society, but it kind of brings us all to this same basic place of, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, survival, <laughs> and right. that's what we're looking at. And and just to circle back on that one, you mentioned being grateful, and I know we're going to talk more about that. But I really love that we can look at our circumstances. We're able to sit here and do this right now, and we kind of didn't miss a beat because we know how to do this. There are a lot of people who are not in our situations. Mm -hmm. and weren't already familiar with technology and they're scrambling to try to learn this and figure it out. And, um, you know, I think we just want to be really, really grateful for what we do have and then give everything we can give to people who need it. So that's yeah. my shout out for the day. I'll get off my soapbox and <laughs> put it back to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I have so many thoughts about it, but, um, yeah, I mean, I see the the staff in these settings and they are incredible. I mean, they are really pulling it together and trying to implement um, 
you know, activities in their rooms, like stream it through their televisions, things that they didn't do before, but they had to, like you said, they quickly had to learn it, you know, watch the video over and over until they understand how to do it, but they're doing it. So they're, they're streaming activities. They're thinking of really fun, creative ideas to engage people, even though they're separate, right? It might be in the hallway. Yeah. Did you see that video where people are doing mm -hmm. bingo in the hallway yeah, and the hallway. bringing cars and there's just, you know, there's other ways, but you're right. We have to learn very quickly. Um, and something else that came to mind is in my former life as an activity director, um, I remember being so frustrated with the fact people would come out of the woodworks to come into care homes and, you know, at the holiday time, right? Like everybody wants to come Carol and arts and crafts. And it's, it just jams up December, like nonstop. And I remember thinking, you know, gosh, there's 11 other months, <laughs> there's 11 months in this year. And I, and I would ask the groups, you know, Hey, y'all, could you come in other times of the year? You know, we really would love to have you. And, um, you know, a lot of times it didn't happen, but now I think because that awareness is there, people realize, oh gosh, this is kind of what it's like. It's not totally what it's like, but it, they get a gist of what it's being isolated feels like. So maybe now these things that we're doing, you know, these, um, these letters, these intergenerational letters and mm -hmm. artwork, these will all hopefully be normal. This will be what happens throughout the year. And I think you yeah. said it early, um, Michelle, the fact that, and I've been saying this for a while, is we're all aging. Aging doesn't just affect you when you're in your 70s or your 80s. I mean, you said that right when we kind of started the show was, you know, you're interesting about aging, which means from the day you're born, we are aging. <laughs> And it's really what we do with that. And I think this is an exam opportunity for us to really, you know, put aging on its head and look at how are we really, how do we want to age? Do we all want to just be, you know, in our own place? Do we want smaller places? Do we want bigger places? Do we want different ways to age? Because I think it's now is the time to, to, you know, the necessity or what, what is the, what is it you always say? The, uh, Catherine, the, Necessity is the mother of invention. There you go. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. So true. What do you yeah. think the challenges could be right now for, for getting people more virtually connected, Michelle? The challenges. Well, I think people, like Catherine said, we have to um, kind of be teachers and okay. teach people how to be connected because maybe they don't know. But this is like a crash course. This whole COVID-19 thing is is it's making it happen right now so sure. that people are learning it and then going forward, we'll be better off for it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that the, really the challenge to me is how can we reach people to me, the biggest thing would be the people in really rural areas. You know, how do we reach those people? Um, I think we really need to focus on that um, where technology may not be as accessible. And as so I will put that out to our viewers. Let us know if you're having challenges or want to know how to connect better. We're here to help. So we will provide some resources. I'm sure we can find some free training and education to get people up to speed on how they can connect. I know there's Zoom, Skype, I think Google Hangouts, they're offering free platforms for, for, for the time being of to be connected as a group and socially and family time, stuff like that. So um, let us know. Please post in the comments how we might be able to help you better understand the technology to stay virtually connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about, this is not a new problem. This is something that old, our older adults have been experiencing for quite some time. Recently, we had Jill Vitale Awesome, the CEO of the Eden Alternative on. And what we talked about, one of the many things we talked about was what so many of us are experiencing being sort of locked down in our own homes not being able to go do some of the things, not having the same freedoms we used to have. This is very similar to what our older adults feel when they transition to a home or when they begin to lose their ability to drive and are kind of at home all the time without being able to do the things they used to do. So you and I talked about the fact that this isn't a new problem. So let's talk about some of the things we can do about it. Right. So. I think that's really important. If if we learn anything, we're going to learn um, a sense of of heightened gratitude and empathy through this. Because even though we can't fully understand what it's like to be isolated in one of these residential care homes, at least we 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 can kind of feel now 
what it must be like, um, you know, to be cut off from loved ones. Like we can't hug. Like for me, I'm a big hugger. So that's an issue. Like I can hug my family, but you know, it's, it's a whole different way of living. And um, some of the things we talked about that, like the intergenerational programs that are coming out. Um, I know one of my colleagues, Rebecca Hogan and, and I are kind of working on something called uh, hashtag intergenerational kindness. Hopefully these will stay in place because we have to understand Isolation doesn't go away when this pandemic ends. And we also the fact that loneliness and isolation, we now know increases depression and has an impact on our health and our mortality. So, you know, we've really got to do our part. Everyone has a part um, in kind of making sure that we stay connected well after this is over. Um, and really great. And, and to tie into what you said just a little bit earlier about <clears throat> in um, how the communities were inundated with people wanting to come visit and do things in December. Right. This is a, another thing that we'll ask you, our audience, if that's something that you do or you have something to offer to these communities, try to spread it out over the months. Give them options so that... Yeah that our older adults can have that, that sort of interaction as often as possible. Right. And I think it's wonderful because this was sparked of the fact children are now stuck at home. So parents are like, oh, what can I do with my kids? Oh, let's let's send letters, you know, to the to the older folks living in these care homes. And that's beautiful and that's wonderful. But like you just said, let's continue to do that and come up with creative ways, whether you know it's sharing your gifts of music sharing your gifts, other creative, uh, creativity gifts, you know, keep it going. Um, whether it's through technology, teaching technology, coming into the homes, you know, sending things to the home. I mean, it's, I think now things are going to shift in awareness. And, and what do you think will shift? Well, oh, it, well, now we're kind of moving to to my my the hopes, final question, right? right? <laughs> yeah, some of it. Yes, yeah. final question. <laughs> my biggest hope, really, and I think all of I can speak for all of us, is that um, these connections, all these creative, thoughtful, kind of heartfelt solutions that we've come up with, that they continue, and that we don't take them for granted. You know, the simple little things or big things, you know, we that we don't take them for granted and we feel a, a heightened sense of gratitude for them. Um, I mean, and like really ultimately, I believe this, we can view this whole challenging global experience um, through a more empathic lens. You know, now we have a, a little bit more of an understanding of what is happening every single day, you know, in senior living. Um, yeah. You know, so hopefully just spread more love. Like at the end of the day, let's just spread more love. That's great. I love it. And I'm even seeing online there, there's always in comments on, on various different videos on YouTube or other forums, there's always someone who's really kind of challenging to deal with, shall I say. And, and other people are coming out and saying, come on, guys, we're not putting up with this anymore. Let, let's stop with the hating online. Let, let's just, we're all in this together. Let's get together and work through this. So I'm liking seeing that and I hope that sticks around as well. And one of my hope is too, is this idea of collaboration. We talked with, um, I believe it was Max, no, not Max. Um, oh, Doug Leidig from Doug Asperger. Leidig from Asperger Berry Communities, who they look at it as this way to share information across to different communities. You're not in competition. You're in this semi-collaboration where, yes, you may be in competition per se, but you can still collaborate on best practices, ideas that are working, things that are really improving how our, senior, how our older adults are aging. And that's what my hope, too, is going off of the, the heartfelt solutions is, Let's make sure we keep up the collaboration, not just from within the long-term care of the aging services, but with the external businesses who have done some pretty unique things that have used technology well ahead of, of, the, of the senior living communities to communicate and to do some of those things. Right, right. Yeah. And, I, and I think just the fact that we're forced to slow down, mm. it, you know, and it just raises your awareness and so hopefully, you know, this heightened kind of mindfulness that we're in, like we are much more um, aware of these, like I said, those little things that we should be grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, and the big things, like now it's like, wow, we have all these new technological um, 
apps that I didn't even know about before. And so now let's use that. I'm going to use that to help, you know, my mom, I, you know, so we can actually communicate together. So, I mean, there is just so many things we can, we can take from this in a positive way. Agreed. And I think that's too, is we know the negativity that's out the not the negative, the truthfulness of what's going on. This is very serious. People can die. You can affect, you know, you can not have any symptoms and affect your loved ones that are older. I mean, you can do those things, but I also think when, when we be so real, we need to give solutions to make it more positive through, yes, you need to stay at home or stay in place, but here let's use this piece to stay as connected as possible. So I think it has to be that double-edged sword, right? Of facing the reality of what's going on, but also giving that sense of igniting some hope that we are going to get through this and this is how. Right. Right. Yeah. And Michelle, that's a great transition to what you're doing right now in teaching mindfulness and embracing gratitude in the midst of all of this chaos. So can you share more about that with our audience? Yeah. So I'm doing a couple of different things. I'm uh, working with Scott Labbitt. We're doing a, who is a family uh, caregiver for his, his father who is living with Alzheimer's. And we have an upcoming course on uh, mindfulness caregiving. And really it's about self-compassion and having self-compassion for ourselves in the midst of hard times. And so we can kind of use that in this, uh, this, um, this virus case as well. But um, so it's a mindfulness course for, for care partners um, and then also I'm working um, with a wonderful uh, creative arts therapist uh, named um, Renee Pastelove. And we've created this program that will be coming out um, called Thrive. And it's an arts collaborative in elder care where we're actually going to reach uh, older folks in these homes as well as staff and really support mm -hmm. them through art therapy and um, other supportive ways. And we're going to do this virtually. Huh, so these cool. are things that we didn't do before, right. but now we have to, you know, I'm used to going into so many different places, but I can't, I'm not, you know, it's not a possibility. So now we're able to support people working with these older adults and the older adults themselves and provide these, these creative solutions and these interventions, um, for, to help them with their quality of life. And, and who is able to join those? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is through Jera Pros and through her business, which we'll post in the, in the comments as well, um, ways people can reach out to us. They would contact us and we're gonna do this very, very um, low cost. We're actually gonna do a, a few free uh, oh, cool. sessions. Yeah, because we want to kind of get it right and really help people and, um, so yeah, so they can just contact us and then we'll send you a link on how to to sign up. But yeah, so it's it's pretty exciting. And this is something born out of this crisis. So right. um, yeah, it's a, a whole new way and, of connecting. And Scott Lavitt, is he uh, also a photographer? He, um, he was originally in advertising. He's a, a an amazing videographer. Um, and so he does, um, he's also uh, kind of a mindful, practitioner, very, very uh, wonderful human. And so partnering with him in his experiences as a caregiver and mine as someone who works in elder care, we kind of collaborate and we focus truly on being present, you know, understanding these difficult emotions and then kind of seeing the silver lining and the joy that can still be, be there, um, you know, in the midst of hard times. Yeah. And, and that's really it is it, it's, how can we find the possibilities? How can we create the possibilities right now? Because we can't change what's happening. And yes, uh, it is very serious and we have to take it seriously and self quarantine or self isolate and be very aware. And yet that gives us an opportunity to, as you said earlier, slow down a little bit, look at things differently and think about how can we find possibility in this and create new things. I think amazing, wonderful things are going to come out of this and already are just watching people in their PJs and, uh, you know, Tom Hanks and his wife, and she was rapping earlier on Instagram. I didn't even know she could rap. So just all these fun little things. So, um, that kind of leads us into our last question, which is the question we're starting to ask all of our guests now. In one year from today, what would you like the world to look like? 
So that, um, I think I kind of touched on that before with how I really would hope that these challenges and these experiences that we're going through just continue and we become more empathetic. We become more grateful and more loving to one another. Um, I, I love this quote. I'm gonna, is it okay if I share a quote with you? Yeah, and I, I, I think most people may know it and I've always loved it. It's by Viktor Frankl, right? The Austrian uh, psychiatrist and neurologist who mm -hmm. also a Holocaust survivor, but it is so relevant for today. So I thought I'd share it. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. And I'm like, has that ever been more true than today? Like, that's our that's our power and our growth right there. Uh, by not reacting, right? Our, our natural instinct to react and and go fearful and go go wild in the fear, but just respond with love, empathy, gratitude, and grow. I love cool. it. It's beautiful. That's a great way to end this segment, Michelle, and really powerful. Thank you for sharing that quote. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom and all of the things that you're putting out there in the world right now. Yeah. Keep doing it. So Michelle, how can people find you? I know we'll put it in the comment section, but could you tell us real quickly how people can get a hold of you and learn more about you? Absolutely. So definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on uh, jeropros.com. If you'd like to send me an email, I'm happy to uh, answer questions and talk with you. Uh, my email, Michelle with two L's at jeropros.com. Yeah, we will put all that information into the comment section as well as the post. So feel free to reach out to Michelle. And again, I, I encourage everybody to start, you know, embracing new opportunities and really look at how we can do things more creatively. And and as Michelle mentioned, there's a lot of great things that are happening right now. Let's keep it going. Let's just not let it go just for this time period, but let's keep it moving forward. Right, absolutely. So. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, take care.